So as you guys know, I'm getting ready to do another project here. And I gave you the sneak peek of which one it was. I was going to do this one because it's going to be pretty simple. But I'm, uh, why would I choose the simple one? Of course I'm going to do this one. That's going to take like probably the rest of the year to do it. So you guys saw the sneak peek of that truck in the um, last, no, in the video of the other custom truck that I just finished up. So there's Joe's truck. That's what we're going to be painting today. This is originally, take our tag off of there. This is a Hot Wheels 1996 Chevy 1500 uh, race team truck. And um, we're going to turn it into my neighbor Joe's truck. Now the grill isn't right. The grill for these trucks, for his truck, there's two different grills for uh, this body style of truck. There is this grill here, which is pretty common. That's the one you see most of the time. It's trying to focus on it. That's the one you see most of the time. Um, there's also a utility style grill. The, of course, the one I have handy is in the package. Um, I guess since I'm taking this out of the package, it's not going to hurt anything if I take it out right now. Um, but this... Uh, this is the other grill that they had. I don't know why they painted the turn signals white down at the bottom. They're supposed to be orange. But, um, well, you saw the clip of uh, my neighbor's truck. So, uh, not the this is a Johnny Lightning, this Tahoe is. The, these grills, I've measured everything. These grills, you can't cut out and put in here. They don't fit. The Matchbox grills that are... This same size are too wide, and these are just too, these are, I think these were too wide as well, yeah. So, we're, uh, they, they really look like they would fit, but they don't fit. So, um, I wouldn't cut this up anyway, but I'm just saying like a, um, I could get one of those trucks. Johnny Lightning's made that Tahoe for a long time. I could get one as a parts truck pretty cheap on the internet. Uh, but the first thing we need to do, I'm debating on what to do first. Should I take the decals off first? Or should I take it apart first? And I think I am going to take it apart first. Uh, we're going to see what we're working with here. As you can see on this picture here, if you can read my crappy handwriting, I never, I just kind of hurry up and do it when I do these. Um, so, body's going to be blue. You saw the truck. Body's going to be blue. Top's going to be white. I wrote light blue fleet color here because at the time I didn't know what that, int what that color is called. That's called French blue. So, Definitely not going to be a race truck anymore. Not going to have the roll bar here. Not going to have a wing. I got to find slash make a back bumper for it. I will see what I can do. Um, the interior, I think we're just going to stick with what we've got. Um, oh, wait. I think I have some extra interiors. We might be able to put at least put another seat in there. Uh... Obviously, we'll cut that crossbar out of the uh, roll bar there. Uh, like I said, we have to stick with this grill, even though that's not correct, because I don't have a, another grill. Uh, I don't have the correct grill for this. And even though it's a separate piece, I can't find one of these trucks that Hot Wheels made that had the utility grill. And I say utility grill. It's the WT grill, which obviously would be work truck. That's just what Chevrolet called it. It's a WT model. It's a work truck model. Uh, it's the base model. That's what this grill is. Not this grill, but the other grill is for a base model truck. Um, 
yeah so I'm gonna take this apart right now can't put it very tight in the vise because that truck's got a plastic body I do not want to break this just being plastic this will probably be the easiest thing that I ever take apart when I start seeing metal shavings I will know that I need to stop. I'm just kind of keep checking it. I don't usually show this part. There we go. Alright, so we're just going to kind of wiggle this guy apart here. Like I said, it's plastic, so we got to be careful not to tear up anything on it. Get out a parts drawer here. Uh -huh, there's a trailer hitch in that one. This truck probably... I'm going to have to modify something if I put a trailer hitch on this. So I'm probably not putting a trailer hitch on that. So I'm going to put that up there with me. Uh, so the windshield is in pretty good shape. It needs polished, but that's all it needs. Um... I'm looking at this, debating on what I want to do. Okay, what I mean by what do I want to do? Do I want to? How's this going there? I just took this out. I should know how it goes in there. Do I want to have Tonho cover? Okay, because I can cut this off and have the a bed wall, and then I can make something to go in the bed so I'm gonna think about that I know I'd rather have it like this with no tonneau cover but I wasn't sure what we were gonna run into with the wheel wells so that wasn't really in my plans to do that um, see here this grill we might need a little nope that comes out see how that comes out so easy and we still have to use the grill that's not going to be the right grill for, for what we're doing. Because we're just not that fortunate. <laughs> I don't know what in the world this box is for here unless maybe these came... I don't see these castings very often. I'm curious. I had to actually get on eBay and buy these. I couldn't find one at a garage sale <laughs> or anywhere else. Um, and this was actually the only one I could find, like on eBay so this one and a gray one uh, maybe that's a weight if these came with like racetrack maybe Hot Wheels weighted them oh wait and that weight I think is gonna be in the way of our if we put a bed in it there yeah huh actually Huh. I'll see what I can do. Uh, this, we may take this in a different direction. This may be more of a custom than what I thought. But for right now, we're just going to take it apart. Uh, it's got, the wheels that's on it are really nice. Um, but it's going to get some different wheels more more realistic wheels for the truck that we're doing they're actually the wheel they're actually wheels that I think will look good on this truck I don't have them out right now but so I'm gonna try my method of getting the decals off with the uh, Dremel and some polish compound rubbing compound I should say not polishing compound um, and we're gonna go from there So we're gonna, I don't know if I would necessarily have to take the the decals off of this. We're gonna rag it, uh, but I'm going to. Uh, now this is plastic, so I don't know if this technique will work on it. I know it works on the, uh, on the metal ones. So we're gonna try it here.
And to me, that feels a little aggressive. Yeah, that's, that's a little aggressive for what we're doing here. So before we make any divots in the top of it, we're just not going to... We're not going to do that. We're going to just primer it and see what we can do because uh, I don't want to have to do anything to the truck uh, you know like patch up any holes or anything in it and with it being plastic that could very easily happen you know you could rub through it and I really don't want to do that so we're just not gonna we're not gonna do that so I patched up the holes, or not holes, but the divots from trying to get the decals off. So I have one more thing I'm going to try, which is rubbing alcohol, because um, I know that won't eat it to plastic. It'll take longer because I won't use the Dremel, but that's okay. I will, uh, I'll at least be able to, you know, get it off without, take that glove off. According to this tube, you're not supposed to get it on my hands. I got it on my hands. I don't really know why you can't get it on your hands, but that's what it says. So anyway, uh, there's uh, there's the holes all filled in and nice and smooth again. So I'm gonna try one more thing, and if that doesn't work, we're just gonna clear or not. No, we're not near ready for that. We are gonna, um, yep, gonna put primer on it and go from there. So, I had a lot of uh, attempts at doing stuff. You can see I, I have all sorts of tools. There's a Dremel hiding behind the uh, files here. I got all kinds of tools out. Uh, you know what we're doing right now is... I really hated to do this because I really, really like this police car. Um, but... I have like... I think I... Last time I counted, I had like 98 police cars. So, I figured I can salvage one of those for uh, for this project it had the uh, WT grill the uh, police car did it's a matchbox so I it's a it's actually cast into the chassis so and I, I haven't filed the chassis down yet I have another Tahoe here which has the regular grill this grill is going to go into this truck or something like that the uh, I may just paint the whole base silver and the whole base is going to go onto this truck this base will go onto this truck with the grill from this one here which is blue it's not the same color blue the Hot Wheels grill fits in the matchbox truck fine the matchbox truck grill was a little bit wider so what I did, I thought about, well, whenever I cut something with the uh, cutting wheel on the Dremels, there's always a little bit of a space, um, you know, between everything. So I thought, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that grill in half. The space sticking out on either side of the grill should go away when I cut that in half and glue them back together. So looks like a big gap right now. I'm going to fill that in once this dries. I have the uh, chassis on here so that the bumper holds all the both grill pieces straight. Once the glue dries, I will uh, work on filling this in. I'll probably do the uh, swapping with those later on because that's not my main concern right now.
thought I was going to have to take the grill out of this and use it for this. Because I started to make a WT grill with this grill and it was not going to work out very well. See where that headlight looks like it's punched out? I had the smallest little ball cutter on the Dremel. Smallest one I've ever seen. It's a little smaller than the, the tip of it. The cutter part is a little smaller than his pupil right there. So for a size size reference there I mean you can barely see that it it's got cutting spots on it so I guess I can put a clamp on this while that glue dries I can put the other two trucks back together I think I've never worked with a plastic casting before everything's more flexible so it's kind of a learning curve for me but once that dries I'm going to fill this uh, space between the two grill pieces in with glue and file it down. Um, maybe glue and glue and baking soda would probably be the best idea. That makes a stronger bond than just the glue. So I can put this back because I don't need this. I really didn't want to take this one apart because this one's really nice. But I would sacrifice it for... The, if I'll sacrifice a police car... For this, I definitely sacrifice a uh, regular truck. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. So this one can go back where it came from. And I'm not going to mess with modifying the interior today. Because that's going to be another long, long process. So the grill, I guess when we put this back together, will actually be... The same piece as the truck because it's glued there, glued together. So what I'm doing now, you see I got the toothpicks out here. Couldn't find an interior, so I'm building a bench seat out of toothpicks for it. Uh, I do need to cut the roll bar out of here because if I don't, that's going to be in my way. And I wanted this cross piece gone anyway. Well, I found it. It went flying up in the air, but I saw where it landed. It landed right next to me. I think it went in the grocery bag next to me, so I'm not going to get it. But I don't know why it went flying like that. But yeah, so I'll file it down those little nubs that's still there. And we'll go from there. So this works pretty good. But this works even better. This, uh, I think, has a price tag on the front of it. No? Well, it doesn't say anywhere there. This is uh, thinner, paint thinner, made by testers. And um, this is the side I have not done, obviously. Uh, but the side that I've done, it takes it all off. You know, it's stuck in the creases. But on the smooth part, it comes all off there. That's nice. So uh, just just rubbing it down with a uh, some thinner on a paper towel. So I've got my glove on here because I was just cutting this and I can't hold on to this. Uh, it's probably cooled down a lot since I got the heat gun, but you can see it it uh, still says 106 Fahrenheit, 100. And Anywhere from 105, now it's 104. But, I mean, you can see why I got the uh, glove on here. What I'm doing, i still wanting to touch it. It's 103 degrees is what that thing last said. I'm cutting this box here off of here. Because I've made a little template for the bed. And uh, 
it has melted the wheel it melted the back wheel which is actually really warm too it, it like deformed the whole wheel that's how hot this got so uh yeah all right i just got the box almost completely cut off and it says 129 degrees what is it like right inside of there 117 I know the back of it's real hot there you go now now you can see it's kind of I'm having a hard time it's wanting to reflect off of other stuff here 140 some degrees, 147 degrees, 5 degrees. When I shine it right on where it's supposed to be. So, yeah, that's why I have the glove on here. I mean, it melted the wheel. The glove, let me pull my finger out of the glove here. The glove says 111. And this is this is very very accurate. This is a Raytac Mini Temp, Raytac Mini Temp thermal gun, uh, infrared gun, uh, and that's hot. So before I mess with that anymore, I'm gonna let it cool down. And uh, once it cools down, I will pry that box off with a screwdriver and then I can get the wheels off good thing I'm not using these wheels anymore since it actually like melted this one okay so let me shut the radio off uh, I uh, all the tools you see strung out across here I have used every one of them tonight including the pencil so I was making the template for this bed here because remember this truck had a tonneau cover on it like this gray one here let me pull it out here it's in the toolbox drawer all right it had a tonneau cover on it just like this one and what I'm going for, as you saw the picture at the beginning of the video, or the video I guess it was, this uh, does not need a tonneau cover. Um, I don't think I showed this on camera either. A lot of this stuff I can't do on camera because it's real tedious. I got some toothpicks and made a bench seat out of a single racing bucket seat. Uh, as you can see there, it's got the, uh, uh, putty over there, the Tamiya putty, and, um, that just makes the bench not look like it's made out of wood. Uh, then this will be painted black, and with it being inside of here, with the tinted windows, hopefully you can't see that too much, um, fits in there really good, uh. This notch back here that I have cut goes into this uh, metal here and that's what holds the interior in place and then the window uh, is held in place also by that piece of plastic behind the seat. Uh, this little thing right here. Uh, the window is held in place by that. It all fits in there just so. And actually, on this truck, with it having this tonneau cover on here, these this window is quite a bit lower. You can see where I modified the seat to make it look like it had a headrest. I never did make another one. I was going to. I don't know. I still might. But anyway, got the uh, headrest here. It looks more like a headrest than a great big black square, which you can see I 
modified that from what the original one would look like. Um, first template I used was heavy duty cardboard. That's what this is. After many failed attempts, how many of these did I cut out of here? I cut, looks like about five of those out. Uh, this one fit the best. Uh, so I used it as a template. Uh, these should have been come straight out. These should not have came in like that. I was following this piece of plastic. I was not following the wheel wells. And that was our issue. So then I cut one out of wood. And I got it in there about 11 o'clock at night. I finally got it in there. Got the wood in there. So it fit perfectly. And as you can see it busted in half. The wood was too thick anyway because it, it made the, the wood was level with the tops of the wheel wells. So that defeated the purpose of tearing the tonho cover out of there. So I used that. The wood template fit. Obviously it's not as bendy as the paper or the cardboard. So the wood template was used to make a piece of tin. A template out of a piece of tin. You can see I cut looks like three templates out of ten I thought I only cut two well here's one of them that's all more I did I I did only cut two of them out I guess that sure looks like I cut three of them out maybe I did cut three of them out oh there's another one sitting over on the other side of the table okay anyway this one kind of fit, but it didn't quite fit. Obviously, this one fit good enough. That other one was too wide. That's what it was. And I trimmed it down, and then it was too narrow. I cut too much of it off. So, based on that, I traced that out and then added and made adjustments where I needed to. Made this fit as good as it's going to fit. Uh, and then the gaps, you can see I filled in with the um, putty and then the piece of plastic that I left on the back of this uh, interior here for the uh, um, front wall of the truck the bed the front wall of the bed was uh, not quite uh, where it should have been it was a little bit it was a little bit lower than the top of the bed I cut it too low uh, I cut the tonho cover off, of course. I didn't think about the fact that, that tonho cover fits flush with the top of that bed. So I had kind of screwed myself from the start, but I think this tin looks better than that plastic would have anyway. Uh, you, know, you can see back in this corner here, it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit 100%, but it fits good enough that once I primer it I'll look at how bad that back corner looks and I may make some adjustments with uh, with this square headed screwdriver here so got my tin snips back you guys might remember those from cutting the wires off the old TVs uh, Used the pencil. Actually, I used everything that you see here, from the Dremel to this. This is some kind of paint thing, but sure works good for using smoothing out that putty. Um, oh, something else I did off camera. The axles for the wheels that I'm using. The the wheels are going to be painted matte black, so they stand out a little bit from the tires. Uh, the the wheels, or not the wheels so much, the axles are a lot bigger around than the original Hot Wheels uh, axles are, as you can see. These are, I think, a sixteenth wide or around, and these are an eighth around. So, uh, obviously, I had to use the bigger piping uh, with the base go the base of this truck 
So I cut grooves in it and then I glued it in there. And um, then I'm going to wire wheel this, get all the crap out of there. Then this is going to be painted black because the front bumper is going to be black. Uh, I cut this, uh, you saw me cut the box off of here that weighed out of the back because uh, it was like you saw how hot it got. Um, this peg here holds in the windows, so that was important. But anyhow, so these are green light axles, M2 wheels, and racing champions tires. These tires came off of a Ford truck. Uh, the wheels came off of a Studebaker truck, and I just put the because uh, I put the the wheels that I put on the Studebaker were had the baby moon hubcaps on them, which looked really close to what the original uh, hubcaps would look like for that truck. So then these hubcapless wheels I already had in mind for this project. The tires, um, when I put everything together to see how it looked, the little bitty skinny tires that was on the uh, on these wheels, they just didn't look right. They were, they weren't, there wasn't enough tire there. Um, because I, I didn't want this lowered down. I wanted it kind of stock height. It's actually got a little bit of a lift to it, but, um, you can see where the axles would have been up here. Now they're down on the bottom. So it's, it's, instead of being stock height, it's actually going to be lifted a little bit, but that's okay. Put bigger tires on it. Like I said, made the bench seat, which this will also be matte black. Uh, the windows got lost under this terrible, terrible lamp that you guys know that I hate so much. This is domed up under here. Those windows were down under that dome. I, I want to throw that lamp away. I don't like that lamp, but I don't have one to replace it, and I can't find one that's that size. So, I'm stuck with it. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, used every tool that you, that you see here, and even that little hammer thing is buried over here. And, um, so I'm glad that that's done. Uh, I, I thought that this, making the bed for this was gonna just be the end of me. <laughs> I'm telling you what, or at least the end of this project, I really thought I was going to just say, you know what, this this is not a super important project. I'm going to move on to something else, but I don't give up easily, and everything fits together as accurately as it can. Um, I th something happened not related to this it didn't fit right before um that this chassis doesn't want to go back into its proper hole but other than that we're okay so that needs wire wheeled and primered obviously this is plastic i can't wire wheel this so i'm just going to clean it then i'm going to primer it and then i'm going to tape it off I'll probably do that matte blue color first I don't know. I'm still figuring out what in what order to do everything. You saw Joe's truck was three different colors. Bed's French blue, top's white, and then there's that like pastel blue, uh, like cabin front clip and grill. So I'm so glad that's that's done. So there you go. So I've got the. Uh wheels here to ready to paint you know uh, the uh, base here is also ready um, took the tires off the wheels put the wheels on the toothpicks and that's how we're gonna paint them they're still gonna be black they're just gonna be matte black uh, same with the the base there's gonna be matte black I don't know if this is gonna work or not this is what I have if it doesn't work I'll paint it with the gloss black. And then this isn't supposed to be matte clear coat, but it sure makes it matte to me. So, 
I'll just spray it with this if it doesn't work. So hopefully this works. So here's after I painted it, obviously. You probably can't tell in the wheels too much. And then the base is still drying. So uh, it, it probably still looks glossy. The bumper, you can kind of see, is not as glossy. The, um, well, the base, or the, the seats, you really can't even see. They're right there. The can, I, the pressure, air pressure in that can is not real great. Um, so, uh, I'm going to dump that over. Yeah, so I'm thinking this base may need another coat. Uh, the wheels shouldn't need another coat because they weren't super glossy anyway. Uh, we'll see how that dries. That shouldn't need another coat. That's on pretty heavy. But uh, We'll find out with the base. I didn't primer the base. The truck I'm going to primer. This is the primer that I use. I'd like to use the white primer for the truck, but with I'm painting a white top on it, so I think I have to use the gray primer, which I guess will be okay. So I just primered the truck here. Got to make sure you get in those wheel wells. Since the truck's going to be slightly lifted, you will see in there. Get the grill all done. I think it'll only take one coat of primer for this one. I'm hoping. So it looks a little light on the hood to me, but I'm a. I think after I prime after the ad dries, I'll probably take it back down to my workshop on my table, and I will uh, check it out, see how everything dried and uh, that will determine do we need another coat of primer or is it ready to be taped up and painted the colors of Joe's truck. So we got the truck all uh, taped up here ready for ready for the first coat of blue. Obviously the primer part is what will be blue or the matte blue, I should say. Uh, that'll probably take at least two coats. Should only take two, but it it might take three. I'm sure it'll take it uh, take two. Um, and then I'm debating on what to do next. May do the roof next after that. Although, as hard as the roof was to tape up. I may do the roof last and do the bed next because the roof was really hard to tape up. That's the hardest thing on the on these trucks. Uh, the hardest thing to tape is the pillars on the roof. You don't want to just tape it around the whole thing. You want to um, tape it individually, uh, each pillar, to... Uh, keep the tape tight around everything because if the tape's not tight there's no point in taping it because it's just going to bleed through uh, that's why I use this tape because this tape uh, seals up really good if you get it tight the key is just to get the uh, tape tight around there and it should work so this is how the the French blue came out. Um, the to me a paint is a lot thinner than the uh, other paint, the Rust-Oleum. So I, I I painted in the wheel wells. It's not showing up real well. Um, the tape left some residue on the truck, and I got most of it off. But then we had some issues with the primer. So, it's not perfect. 
the back came out pretty good, but it's not perfect. But I'm going to untape it and hopefully we don't have the same trouble that we had before with the with the tape taking paint off cuz I do not want to redo this whole thing. All right, so it came out perfect except for one place where the paint ran down. I'm going to try to since the it's not supposed to be a perfect looking truck. Obviously because of the color choice. It's just supposed to look like Joe's truck. Um, I'm going to try to get that off without tearing up anything. But yeah, for the most part, it came out really good. So I got it off, but it took the blue paint off. So what I'm going to do is just spray a little bit of the blue paint in a little puddle and touch it up with a brush because the rest of the truck came out so good that you know there's no reason to redo anything it's definitely a unique truck but that's what it's supposed to look like the inside looks very interesting because of the different layers of tape being peeled off you know you can see where it was taped off for the white or the blue or the uh, French blue. So I've detailed the uh, front of the truck, you know, painted the grill in. And since there was no bow tie emblem in the grill, um, it was just, you know, remember I cut this grill in half and glued it back together and tried my best to make everything match up. So, the fact that, maybe the camera will focus now. Nope, still wants to focus on my hand. Anyway, you can see that's just kind of a gold line. There's not really a Chevy bow tie in the grill, but it's so small that, you know, you can't really tell unless you're zoomed in on the camera. Then I painted in the uh, turn signals and the headlights. That one came out better. And I did the tail lights as well. I have to let it dry completely before I do the reverse lights. So yeah, overall I'm happy with the truck. Everything came out excellent except for that right there and um, the uh, French blue could have came out a little better but that's not because of the paint. That's other factors of uh, the uh, primer did not which I used to me a primer but it didn't adhere properly and so I reprimered it because I know it didn't adhere properly because it stuck to the tape and it peeled the t the tape peeled everything off but you can see when I took the tape off this is kind of the cab here you know like the hood and the front fenders and the the doors and the windshield and everything here just kind of came off in one big piece and then everything else you know you can see the white and different colors there it's like a big hard shell so next time you see this truck I will have touched this up and I'll probably be putting it back together alright so I got that patched up. There's a little spot in the corner I patched up as well. And I touched up the grill a little bit. I noticed there was a spot that not the whole space was um, filled in. So did that. And then I showed you guys I did the tail lights. So <laughs> this is our blueprint so hopefully we're going to put it back together today so there's the bench seat we made for it so 
assuming that everything still fits in here. I remember I cut this slot in the in the back of the seat here and that slot goes in to this uh, piece of metal here like so and um, that keeps the seat from moving out of place okay and then assuming everything fits back together right something's not right here Here we go. Got the hmm. That should fit inside of there. Anyway, uh, we can I can glue it in there, so it's not a big deal. But uh, then we have the wheels in here. So yeah dump all this crap out here so if you remember from the beginning of the video I guess I I'm keep forgetting this has all been in one video for you guys um, I have some different sized tires here it looks like I have all the tires on the uh, on the wheels here so those must be extra tires and then the original original mainline wheels that were on it along with the one that got hot and melted then the failed attempts at making a template for the bed looks like part of the tonhoe cover oh that's the back this is that horrible little weight that was so hard to cut off of there and we have some various pieces of plastic here The axles on there. I don't think that it mattered what was front and what was back. But just in case it did, I think these were the front. Oop, we got a crooked tire here. Alright, so I think that this needs bigger tires on it, looking at it now. Yeah, it does. It needs a lot bigger tires on it. That looks kind of goofy. Yeah, that needs bigger tires on it now. <laughs> 